But, um, I'm, I'm Matt, I'm with the Curator of Education with the Neville Public Museum, and I'm going to be presenting on Wisconsin Civil War Memorials. And um, first off, to tell you, this is being sponsored um, by the Wisconsin Humanities Council, thanks to a grant from them. And uh, we do have this lecture series going on here at the Neville Public Museum, and we have a program on the last Wednesday night of each month at 6.30 p.m. Um, we have a card that has all of our different listings of those programs, and also um, we're having these programs because of our exhibit, Magic Boys, Northeast Wisconsin in the Civil War, and it's a real wonderful exhibit to come and see. Uh, so the reason why I chose this topic is primarily because May 31st is my birthday, and where a lot of kids go to places like Chuck E. Cheese for their birthdays, I ended up going many times out to a cemetery to plant uh, flowers on people's graves. Uh, and when you do that, you start to learn things about cemeteries. You grow a little bit of interest in it. In this country, just 50 or 60, 60 years ago, you could have gone to a cemetery for a picnic. Um, and that's kind of changed these days, but you can still learn the history, you can still jog, and you can still watch the birds. Uh, but I like to study the history that's in them. So that was the impetus for me doing this program right near the Civil War. And I had to do a, uh, some research. Fortunately, there is a website that's out there that you can look up and find a lot of Civil War monuments. But you can also uh, find some that aren't listed on this website. And all you have to do to find that website is Google um, Wisconsin Civil War Memorials. And you will find that the first hit is usually the one that tells you about all the different Civil Wars memorials of Wisconsin. There are probably over 200 of them throughout the state. Um, what I started with by starting with this site, however, was that I found that the one that was listed in Brown County was only listed in Greenlee, which if you've driven through Greenlee, They've got the D&G, they've got a gas station you get, a, get ice cream at, they've got a bank, and they've got a roundabout, and not much else there. It was a lot bigger city back during the Civil War, and their veterans came up with this obelisk, which is a classical style for a Civil War uh, memorial. Usually one of the places you'll find these memorials is in cemeteries, and this obelisk has on it the GAR symbol, which you can see in the right hand side. The GAR symbol is GAR is for Grand Army of the Republic. These were the Civil War veterans that came back and commemorated year after year um, their participation in the Civil War. And the, the star actually does kind of remind me on the inside of the uh, Wisconsin flag, um, the symbol in the center of it. On the top of the GAR symbol, you can see Old Abe, um, the, the Civil War the eagle that served here in Wisconsin. And down at the, in the left-hand picture, at the base, you can see the shield that you will often see on Civil War tombstones that were put up by the GAR. And these tombstones, uh, this one is um, Asahel F. Ham from the 24th Wisconsin Infantry Regiment. He served for three years in Wisconsin. He was from Greenleaf. Little town of Greenleaf has about 17 Civil War monuments in it. And these, uh, these tombstones, you can usually tell that they're uh, Civil War tombstones, although if you get a newer looking one, you can go ahead and uh, see that it's sometimes from the Spanish American. Ham was one of those soldiers that's represented, in fact, his is closest to the Civil War monument in Greenland. Um, well, websites can have misinformation on them, and I started asking around about where the one from Brown County for De Pere and for Green Bay is. And uh, Mary Jane Herbert of Wisconsin's uh, the, uh, State Historical Society here, she keyed me into another person. Uh, she's with our local historical society. And that other per the place where she said Brown County one is located in the other place where you find a lot of these monuments, in front of the courthouse. And this courthouse's uh, monument was erected towards the latter end of Civil War monuments, and that was in 1934. And this monument um, itself is 
just a block of rock with a plaque on it. Um, in fact, the courthouse behind it seems to be the thing that really grabs your attention more than anything else. Um, but it does have all the components that you need for memorial. Um, it does talk about um, being dedicated to the soldiers who lost their lives and who valiantly served. It does have, say, who erected it, which was the Women's Relief Corps, um, number 91, auxiliary to the Grand Army of the Republic. And as Civil War soldiers started dying, um, other organizations, auxiliary organizations such as uh, the Women's Relief Corps and the DUV were formed uh, so that they could also carry on the memory of these Civil War soldiers. The DUV was the Daughters of the Union veterans, and they differed from the Women's Relief Corps in that the Women's Relief Corps was made up of the mothers, uh, grandmothers, daughters, nieces of these soldiers, whereas the daughters of DUV was solely the daughters of these Union veterans. In Green Bay, if you go to our Woodlawn Cemetery, you may not find a, a war memorial, but you can find some of our local heroes. And one of them is Melanchthon Smith, who had participated in the Battle of New, York, New Orleans. And um, his, he's got a nice, good monument there. We have some of his things on display in the Badger Boy exhibit. We also have Morgan L. Martin, just a few feet from him, who also served during the Civil War and was promoted by his son, uh, Colonel Leonard Martin, who went to West Point and served during the war as well. So we have a nice cluster of really good uh, Civil War veterans right here. De Pere has, uh, has a plaque that is up, that is the Gettysburg Address in Wilson Park near St. Norbert College. And that plaque, because it's in Wilson Park, I, I lived in West De Pere for a while, and I was once told that I'm not living in De Pere, I'm living in West De Pere. So technically this is in West De Pere. Um, and it was uh, dedicated in 1916 by James Hughes. James Hughes at that time was the superintendent of schools, and at one point when I was talking to Mary Jane Herber, she said that this plaque may have actually originally been in a school and then was moved to Wilson Park. Um, but it was dedicated in 1916. James Hughes later became uh, a congressman in our area. Appleton has Soldier Square Monument. And this is the next kind of Civil War monument that you will see. is an obelisk with uh, scul uh, 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 sculptures uh, or statues on it. And these are Civil War soldiers that are depicted a little bit more lively than some. And this is built in 1911 by A.W. Priest, who was one of the owners of the Hearthstone House. A.W. built it because he wanted to pay tribute to his brother, who served in the Civil War. It was designed by Gaetano Trentanoe, who also sculpted Father Marquette statue in Milwaukee and the statue of President William McKinley in Washington, D.C. And also, besides the downtown area, if you go out to the Riverside Cemetery, which is one of my favorite cemeteries, um, you can find some other Civil War memorials. This one is to George D. Eggleston, and it's from his post. The posts were set up much like the VFW posts. It was a place where Civil War soldiers could go and talk about the war with each other and uh, commiserate. And so this was set up to commemorate not only him, but also that post. Um, we only have one that's left in Wisconsin at this time. Um, in Nina, there is a stone that is in one of the city parks, the Lighthouse Park, uh, that has a plaque on it that commemorates Civil War, and this was put up by Charles B. Clark, who was the founder of Kimberly Clark. And the people that put this up were actually the C.B. Clark Circle of Ladies of the Grand Army of the Republic. So these aren't just the daughters of the Union veterans. This is the daughters of C.B. Clark, specifically, and those directly related to him. And the monument was raised in 1932 by the ladies and erected in memory of the Civil War veterans from Nina. You can see this, um, this 
this uh, monument over on the left-hand side of the picture, and uh, on the left-hand side of the lighthouse. And the area served as a training ground for the 21st Wisconsin Regiment, Company I, as they waited to be transferred to a camp in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. They later named that camp Camp Bragg in honor of Edward Bragg of the 6th Wisconsin Infantry, also known as the Iron Brigade, which Wisconsin is very famous for. Camp Bragg is located in Oshkosh, and this memorial grounds is really great um, because you have several cannons. This was an actual training ground uh, for the soldiers. You can find out all sorts of history there, and there's a monument there. These uh, photos, by the way, are uh, courtesy of Nick Kurtz. Um, also, there is a DUV, Daughters of Union Veterans, um, at Riverside uh, Cemetery. Funny how both Oshkosh and Appleton have a Riverside Cemetery. Um, and it's dedicated in loving tribute to all Union veterans who so loyally served God and their country in the great conflict, 1861-1865. And this is erected by the Clara Barton Tent Number no. Three and the Daughters of the Union Veterans of the Civil War. Erected by the Clara Barton Tent Number no. Three and the Daughters of the Union uh, Veterans of the Civil War. And in the background, you can see the other memorial, this one right here, um, which is in Oshkosh. And this monument sits on the J.R. Plot, plot on the grounds of the Oshkosh, Wisconsin Riverside Cemetery. It's a white bronze stole, soldier about six feet on the top, and it says to our dead comrades on the outside. Um, you notice this This is sort of like the transition. This is the half obelisk and, you know, with the soldiers on top, and they all come in various sizes. So one thing that you can do if you're looking at a cemetery uh, and you're trying to find a memorial is look for a sculpture or an obelisk, um, especially a really tall one. Chilton's got a real interesting story here. They have theirs out in front of the county courthouse. Always good to check in front of the county courthouse. And it says, in memory of Calumet County, deceased soldiers um, presented to the city of Chilton by Anton Coker of Wis Chilton, Wisconsin, late of Company B, 13th Wisconsin Infantry. And this was originally in the downtown area at Maine and Madison, and it was moved to the courthouse in 1927. And I love it when these memorials have somebody's name on it, because I want to find out who that person is, or was, I should say. Well, Anton Coker had a real interesting story. I found this, which was from the Minneapolis Journal, and essentially he used his entire retirement pension to pay for the monument. And, um, you know, after all these years of service, uh, he, he used his pension for this. My wife was like, well, wait a minute, why would he do that? And I, I couldn't find out exactly why, um, but I know that he had a wife and he had two children, and I was like, no, wait a minute, why is he giving his entire pension over to these two people? And then I started realizing something else. This article that announces is this real patriotic thing that he's doing is from June 11, 1901. And on the monument, it says that Anton is late of Company B, which means he has passed away, and this is erected in 1902. So perhaps he knew that his own end was coming. Perhaps he knew that he had a terminal illness. Um, but uh, it's known as the only place uh, that has, that's in the United States that was paid for fully by a soldier out of his own pension. Beloit, I, I think they, they need a few more sculptures in this one. <laughs> um, sometimes you go to a place and it's just fun just to look at the sculptures. And what's great about this one that I, I love is it's um, it's got about four different or five different soldiers on it. Uh, it is surrounded, if you can look at the foreground of the picture on the left, you see all of those shield tombstones. And so that all of the Civil War veterans are right nearby uh, this, this memorial. 
Uh, you can see that there are a lot of them. It's well represented amongst those veterans. And you notice there's also these little brown stars next to them. And that's one of the things that the GAR did was they often put bronze and steel uh, stars, uh, uh, bronze and iron stars, representing uh, those different soldiers. They had two different styles. One was for the uh, people who served in uh, the, in the army, and the other one for the infantry. And one of them was for those that were in the Navy. Um, and one thing that's really nice about going to these places is just walking around something like this that is very colossal and seeing every detail. And what I like about this one is that uh, the soldier that's depicted here isn't a soldier, it's a, it's a naval officer. And so it's, it's also very interesting to look at. In Berlin, Wisconsin, there is a Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Nathan Strong Park. And also they have um, two different cannons that are uh, located in that one as well. Darlington has a really high up uh, <coughs> monument. Its obelisk, I believe, is 86 feet high. And it has four sides to it. Um, when I see these sculptures on top, I wonder sometimes if there was a company that was you know, manufacturing these sculptures and selling them to every city they could get to. Um, but um, this says, on, in, honor of the, uh, in honor of the living soldier to keep green, the memory of the heroic dead, uh, grateful people erect this monument. And this is on the east side of the monument. Um, the, the picture on the left is on the um, is on the south facing side, and um, the one on the west. So you got the rising sun talking about hope and the people that are still alive. The one that's on the west reads, "They died, the nation lives," right where the sun is setting. In Delafield is a very significant monument, and this is the Cushing Memorial Park. When we're talking about Cushing, we're not talking about one Cushing. We're talking about the three Cushing brothers that served during the Civil War. And their pictures are in the upper left-hand corner. Um, and we've got Alonzo, and we've got, let's see here, this is William. I can't read the third one. But they all served valiantly and bravely in the um, Civil War. Um, and each one of them made their mark. And because of that, Delafield wanted the Civil War uh, Memorial. Uh, you can find books on just these three brothers. We have one in our own collection. And they dedicated this on, on May 31st, um, 1915. And what was interesting about this is when they dedicated it, um, Miss Catherine Cushing, daughter of William Barker Cushing, unveiled the monument. And one thing that I've noticed about some of the Civil War accounts when it comes to the unveiling of the monument, they usually have a young woman or even a girl do that. And in one of the monuments I read about, they actually had um, the woman dressed as Liberty. So she was rep representing the goddess Liberty. Um, William was the most famous of the three of them, and he was considered Lincoln's commando. He was a naval officer. And he helped um, Lincoln break through to, with New Orleans. And so um, his, his, because of his heroic duties, he's buried in U.S. Naval Academy, Academy Cemetery in Annapolis, Maryland. Also in Delafield, they have, um, in August 1931, this small monument was originally set up. And it was placed uh, with a tree. And this is something else that some of the GAR members did to commemorate and think about uh, their, their, um, their the people that have gone before them, their fallen soldiers. And if you put a tree up, usually a pine, a fir, or an oak, it would live a very long time. Um, and people could see that for a very long time. And so um, it was originally placed by a tree, but then the plaque was moved. And now it stands a little bit farther out from the other um, Cushing Memorials. This one, however, um, both of these, are, the one that I just showed you is dedicated to the unknown dead of the Civil War. This one is in Boscobel, and it's a very large one, uh, to the unknown dead, or the unknown soldier uh, of, 
uh, the Civil War. It uh, was dedicated in 1907 <coughs> by the John McDermott GR Post, number 101. And the John McDermott Post is the last remaining uh, Wisconsin GAR Post. And you can actually go and visit it in Boscobel. And during the summer months, if you go on the weekends, you can even learn about the Civil War from uh, people. They usually have a reenactment there as well. Uh, but this was a meeting place for them, much like the DFW posts today. Um, you see a lot of cannons in Wisconsin, but you don't usually see one this small. This is a mortar-style cannon, and even though it looks small, it weighs 980 pounds. And this is in lacrosse, and um, what's interesting is that it says on the edition that this was, uh, was at the capture of Mobile, New Orleans, and Vicksburg. So this little cannon did a lot. Um, and so it's, a, it's nice to see this little one. It's also odd because it's in a cemetery. And one of the things that's odd about having these cannons around is that sometimes um, you have a cannon that's facing right into a residential area. And uh, I was even talking to somebody who said that they had a cannon that faced across the street from them. And it was pointed right at their house. And it kind of always weirded them out. And I've never seen a cannon in a cemetery. So I'd love to, to really go out and see this one. Milwaukee has a, a very famous sculpture. It's considered probably the most significant Civil War sculpture in Wisconsin. And part of it is because of what it depicts. A lot of the sculptures you've seen are just the soldiers standing. Um, often they look very quiet and somber. But this is what I like to consider the Iwo Jima of their time. And I even kind of wonder about the, the Iwo Jima sculpture that is, uh, you know, the picture that that's made, if it was set up to look like this. Um, but essentially what you have here is a soldier that has taken the Union flag from his dying uh, brother's arms, or his dying comrade's arms. And you can see the figure in the left-hand picture at the bottom. It's sort of almost laying down and looks like he's dying. And you can even see that the Union staff flag is broken, um, but yet he's still holding the flag above him, the eagle's on top, and the two soldiers that are following behind him as he looks like he's you know, getting ready to charge, um, have their weapons drawn. And something else that you don't usually see on these sculptures is the weapons actually drawn. Um, the reason why this uh, sculpture is kind of endangered is that the bronze is flaking away and it needs significant restoration right now. And uh, you can see all the crackling that's on this picture. It just gives you an example of this. Um, but it's, it's a really powerful uh, image uh, that this sculpture is. Racine has another one of these really tall obelisks. You know, if I were bird watching and this was another certain kind of hawk, I'd be getting bored right now. Um, but uh, this very high uh, obelisk, one of the things that's significant about it is that it was raised by Governor Harvey's GR post. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Governor Harvey, he was governor for a very short time during the Civil War. He died of a drowning, and his wife Cordelia Harvey uh, took up his cause. And so this is one that is erected in his honor, really. Um, it also has two 4.2-inch uh, Navy Parrot rifles at its base. Also in Racine is another unique thing, and that is there is the first uh, sculpture, and this is of Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln together. In Civil War photographs, if you really want to uh, pull one over on someone, tell them that you found a photograph of Mary Todd and Lincoln together, because they didn't have it. There, there really isn't a, a, a shot of the two of them together. Um, and this is probably the last Civil War monument that was erected in Wisconsin. Um, Money was donated by Lena Rosewall, who studied the Lincolns, and um, they also she also chose Racine because Mary Todd came to speak during the campaign trail here in um, Racine, and she's depicted in a very loving way, 
you notice that the faces are, are set up very smooth and elegant. They're not all wrinkled and furrowed because this is just after the election, just before the war. And so it gives this really loving and compassionate and hopeful um, look at the Lincolns. Now, um, there is a replica of this <coughs> sculpture that is in Wisconsin. It's in northern Wisconsin. It's in Phillips at the Wisconsin <laughs> Concrete Park. And it is not made by a professional sculpture. It was made by Fred Smith, who owned a bar and made his sculptures out of concrete and broken beer wine and, and other kinds of liquor bottles. Um, this was made later, so perhaps this is the last Civil War memorial that's put in Wisconsin. Waukesha has a rail splitter cannon. Now, when I say rail splitter, does anybody know what I'm talking about when I say rail splitter? Who I'm talking about? Yes. That was part of the Lincoln campaign. Yep. Yep, that was part of the Lincoln campaign. And originally this brass piece, uh, this, uh, originally a brass piece, this cannon was made by the Pink Pickin Foundry in Milwaukee. It was first fired during Lincoln's 1860 campaign. During the Civil War, it was used as a recruiting rallies to signify Union victories. And while the 28th Wisconsin was encamped in Milwaukee, it was used as a signal gun. And uh, Waukesha, Waukesha soldiers re revered it as a valuable relic. What I love about this memorial is it's two-sided. You can go to one side and read one story, you can go to the other side and read the other story. And it's in a city park in Waukesha. Now, some of you may wonder where the first Civil War memorial is in Wisconsin, and it's located in Lancaster. Um, it's in Grant County, and it's in front of the um, Grant County Courthouse. It is um, the first Civil War monument, and its fundraising began in 1862. Now, wait a minute. The Civil War doesn't get over until 1865. So this was an actual county fundraising project. They didn't know when the Civil War would get over, but they started collecting subscriptions for it. And once the war was over, they had it commissioned and finished off raising money for it and had it built. And so they literally had the very first Civil War monument, not just in Wisconsin, but in the United States. So they were good to go. They were shortly followed up by Kenosha, who also did the same thing. Um, and, oops, yeah. Kenosha also raised their money, only they did it through the city. And what they did was a little bit different. Rather than depicting the soldiers, they depicted the goddess Nike, who was the goddess of victory. And what makes this uh, monument real different, it does have that obelisk-like design, but it's more a Greek-style design. And I think it sets it apart from any of the other Civil War monuments in the state. Up there in tiny little Bayfield, up at the top of the state, um, back in the 1860s, it was a lot bigger than 600 people. And uh, there is a Civil War monument in the cemetery that's there. Um, and my wife and I own uh, a place up in Bayfield, so we know, you know, I visited this um, uh, very often. It's very simple, uh, obelisk, but all of the Civil War veterans are uh, next to it. And if you see this, uh, Tombstones in it, that's in the front, you can see the GAR star there, and then you notice this is the naval officer. So that's the style for the naval officer. It was um, sponsored by Curry Bell, who was the owner of the town newspaper, and it came in in 1889. And some of these uh, towns, you'll notice that they get it right about the 20th to 25th anniversary of uh, the Civil War. Some of, us, some of them come up during the 50-year anniversary. Uh, you can see that it's worn by the weather um, up there, and you have mosses and lichens growing on it. Uh, but it, it was one of the earlier Civil War monuments in our state. Meredith has an interesting one to it. Um, on Stevenson Island, it was dedicated in, on May 30th, 1917, by Jacob Wittig, who remarked at, in the 1916 gathering of the GAR and his fellow Marinette residents 
It is a shame that our soldier dead are marked by headstones only about the size of which we place over the graves of deceased paupers. And he took up the challenge of raising the money for this and was able to raise it and um, put it on the uh, Stevenson Island. It was also hoped at the time that uh, he would be, um, this, this island would become sort of a summer resort area for people. And so this would have been one of the attractions that you could see this sort of historical thing. Um, Mr. Wittick had his fingers in a lot of things, but one of the things that he had his hands in in 18, 1899 is he patented this um, burial box. Uh, so he already had some business working with cemeteries and graves. Um, he then later went on to be uh, a Democratic representative uh, for us. My final place is Kiwani. And I've chosen this one because um, one of the things about these is you don't have to necessarily do all the historical research on them to enjoy them. And I think that Kiwani has something really special in theirs. Um, Civil War memorials um, are best placed in places where we can reflect or we can think about our history, such as the beautiful county courthouse behind it. Um, they're also designed so that you can walk around them. It has two cannons. Um, and you have to remember, the good thing about these sculptures is that you can see what the soldiers wore, what they carried with them from every angle. Also, you might learn a few things that you might not know. And one of the things I didn't expect when I went to this one uh, was to find cannonballs. That's not listed on it. And one of the things I never knew about cannonballs was, was that some of them are solid but some of them have holes drilled into them and grooves put into them so that you can pack them with powder and then put them into the can. Um, so you get another look at something that's really different. Um, and they're just really good places uh, to reflect, to think about, and uh, realize what history we have here. As I said, I've, I've just scratched the surface. And there are about 200 of these memorials out there. And if you're on a lanyard driving around, um, what you might want to do before you go out there, just bring this up in just a second here. Good old internet, and hopefully it won't start updating or doing a scan on me or something like that. Let me type in. site that you usually get very first is this uh, Sons of Union Volunteers. And it has all of these different sites that you can visit. Uh, <coughs> visit. There, these are the ones that are pictured listed below, but there's also a place you can go on this site where you can go county by county to find out what's out there. And with that, there's still time for if anyone has questions or also there's still plenty of time to see our exhibit. Yeah. Comment. One, one of the Civil War monuments, uh, I think the, the best one I've ever seen, mm -hmm. the one you'd be interested in, I think, is the one that's in the town of Rhine in, in, in Chicago County. Okay. Because they sent 130 guys to the Civil War. 26 of them died, which is the average. 20% of the guys that went back. But on that monument, if there's two, I think, is the fact that every soldier that went from the town of Ryan, his name is on that monument. Mm -hmm. And all 26 of them that died in battle list the, the date that he died and the battle that he was in. And it gives you a very, you uh, just feel very connected to it. But I think that's the first one in Wisconsin now. Oh, you like 4th, 1866. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was going off of the list that we have here. Yeah. Let's see if we got a picture. We'll see. The eagle is gone. The eagle is gone, but it is right here. 
There is a list. Well, 1868, okay, I'm sorry. 1868, so it was a little bit later. <laughs> um, and we've got some pictures here of the monuments. It, it says on the side, uh, if you want to know the prevails of the West, go, go ask the rebels for the North West. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is the horse still there? Oh, wait, that's a good one. Okay. Other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Have a good night. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs>